Hi class, it's Mrs. McDonald, and I am so excited about our art lesson today. We are going to be doing some watercolor painting with washable markers. So we have really easy supplies today. You need a pencil, a paintbrush, water in a glass, um, I do have some paper towel here or kitchen paper that you can use um, just in case you need to blot your uh, paintbrush. And then I have watercolor markers here. So what we're going to do is we are going to use this watercolor paper and we're going to draw a design. And then we're going to trace over the design with our markers and then we're going to paint them. And then when it dries, it'll be a masterpiece. So again, I want to remind everybody, you are the artist and you get to decide what pattern you want to do, what shapes you want to do. You can do all squares. You can do all triangles. You get to pick a thousand circles. So this is a little bit similar to the one we did maybe two months ago um, where we painted bubbles. This is a similar technique. Um, it's a little bit more. So we're just going to get started and see where our creativity takes us. So you can see, I went ahead and drew just a little bit of an outline on our beginning. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make a big flower. So that's what we're gonna do, what I'm gonna do. But again, you can take this whole thing and just grab candle jar lids or glasses and you can do just a thousand circles. You can do anything you want and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. So we have a small little circle here and then we have a bigger circle here. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start making petals. So we're gonna do just a really pretty little petal. Okay, and then we'll do another little petal. Okay, and then we'll join them with another petal. And that's basically what we're gonna do. So on the sides, we'll just do like a pretend petal over here that kind of goes off into the nothing. And then we're gonna connect these two guys over here like this and connect them like this. And then we'll do our phantom petal off the side. Here we go. And I'm gonna start here. Now you can do really any design you want. I saw this one online and I thought it was really pretty. And I loved how she had big petals and small petals, just like a real flower. And here in Colorado, it is spring and we are just starting to get all of our flowers blooming. So it's really pretty outside. All right, let's see, I'll start here, boop. And I love purple, as you guys well know. And my whole flower bed in front of my house is all different purple flowers. So that's kind of fun. Oh, that's a very fat petal. That's okay though. Because I can do whatever I want because I'm the artist. So let's see. I'm just going to change things up a little bit here at the end and add in some nice big petals. We'll get some pretty detail in there. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm gonna just do all right, cool. And so that gives us a pretty good start. I may add some more at the end. We'll see what happens. You know, I like to go on the fly a little bit because art is all about creativity and you cannot really make any mistakes. So to start off, I'm just gonna grab, I laid out my colors in order of the way I wanna use them so that I don't get confused. And that way I could do a little bit of planning. And these are washable markers. Um, you can also use like watercolor markers, but those are a lot more expensive. And these, the whole pack was like five bucks. So I like to try and use affordable materials. These are just Crayola. Um, because that way you guys can easily find them. I think Crayola is pretty much available in every country. All right, so we're gonna do a nice thick line there. And then I'm gonna go red. And I'm gonna 
do a nice thick line here as well. And you don't want your lines to connect because we are gonna bleed that through in a few minutes. a little bit of yellow in here just to get some color depth in with this orange when I start bleeding it together. Okay, so let's see, now pink. So basically I'm just gonna trace these and it's a good chance for you when you're tracing them to fix any lines that you didn't like. Okay. And we're just gonna go layer by layer as a different color. So we have that color, then we're gonna go into this color. So you'll probably have three to four petals of each color and it'll make like a nice rainbow flower. And of course I have three different colors of purple because I love it. Okay. And like I said, you can smooth out any lines because we're gonna go over this with water, all that pencil is gonna disappear unless you put it really dark, but I didn't, so we're okay. Okay. I'm just gonna keep on working along. Just kidding. There we go. Okay. Oh, that's such a big petal. All right. some more colors because I got too excited when I was making my petals. Okay, so, and I made too many. Here we go. with orange just give it nice you know a lot of roses will have white tips or really light color tips so I'm gonna go in with orange okay so now we have our basic rainbow flower and it looks really good I'm really happy with it so now we need to add in some accent colors so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick colors that will blend really nicely with the color above it. So I'm gonna start with this pink. And basically what we're doing is we're depositing color, kind of making ourselves a little paint palette here. So I'm just gonna do almost like a little flame shape in the middle or like a mini petal. And I'm just gonna add that right here in the middle. And when we start painting, it'll pick up that color. And then we just kind of want to keep with our color families. Let's see. I think I will do dark purple here. And it doesn't have to be exactly matching color families. You can just get close or do colors that you know will blend really pretty together. Like green and blue will make a nice teal color. And 
you just want to deposit this color. So we're just basically making little flames. And it's really just coloring, which is always fun. So for the blues, I'm gonna go opposite. So I'll do a dark blue in here. And this doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna watercolor over all of this with water. So it doesn't have to be perfect. If you make a mistake, you know my philosophy, there's no such thing. So you don't need to worry. And I'm just gonna keep on being creative and mixing colors that I like together. up our two greens. So do a dark green here. And the cool thing about this that's fun is if you have a younger sibling um, who is in preschool or kindergarten, you can let them color all of this. And won't they be so proud of their hard work to see what it'll look like. Okay. Almost done. This is such a nice project because I can just picture you guys in your houses coloring right along with me, which is so fun. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. So I will do orange here. And again, we're just creating a little deposit that we can pull color from. Like you can see, it's already starting to bleed a little bit, which is kind of fun. Uh, 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 uh. And let's do purple here. Ooh. And what should we do for our orange? <laughs> I think I'm going to go kind of bright pink, pinky purple. It almost looks like peacock feathers, huh? Okay, so that's it, we did it. And that already looks really great. You could really stop there. And if you have glitter, you could dab little bits of glitter on there, but we're gonna take it one step further. And we're gonna take our water, and I'm gonna pull it right here so you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna dunk it in, dunk in my paintbrush, get it nice and wet, and then I'm just gonna start painting. And it reminds me a lot of the paint by number that I used to do with my daughter when she was little. So what you're gonna get is you're gonna get some bleeding over where you can control your paint because we've got wet on dry. So we're gonna control our paint. And then you're gonna get some beautiful bleeding here of colors. And you can control that bleeding. So if I want more red here, I'm just gonna pull it down. Boom, right there. Okay. Already looks beautiful. Look at that big difference. Okay. So I'm gonna dab my paintbrush off a little bit because I don't wanna go out of control here. So I'm gonna pull in from my purple edges into my petal. Try and get some purple in there so it doesn't eat up all the red. And then I'm gonna just bring this pink in along the edge out into the purple. And basically we're gonna do that every time. So we're gonna start with our edge and tug it in there. Just keep pulling that color in. It's really fun because you see all these little mini rainbows that start coming out from the red and the, look at this orange. Oh, beautiful. And if you don't like that, um, bleeding here, all you have to do is use your paper towel and pull, um, you can just dab at it and it'll get rid of that. Let me show you what that looks like in just a second. So I'm gonna grab the edges here of this purple and you can see it pulled in a little bit of this blue, beautiful. And that's where you really get fun colors in these petals. Okay, so let's just pretend even though I love it, that I don't like all this orange in here. So I can actually start dabbing this out and it will stop it from bleeding so much. 
but I love it. And I think it's a really pretty effect. And it really makes it look like such a difficult picture to make. And only we know how easy it was. So we're just pulling in these edges and then we're just encouraging all these water colors to blend and grow together. It's a bit like teaching. I get to encourage you guys to be creative and then be so excited when you send me your work and you take my ideas and come up with something really amazing. It's really fun. I was really excited when I found this project because I know so many of you guys are gonna love this one. And another nice thing about it is your water doesn't get too much paint in it. So you don't have to constantly change out your water like you do if you're doing real watercolor painting. And using different paints, your water stays pretty clean. So it's really like a very fun do-it-yourself paint by number and you get to be in control. Because this paper was dry when I started, it really does let you control where the water goes, and that's pretty fun. And you can see here, I'm getting a little bit of pooling, so I'm just pulling that water back over here. And it's totally okay. I can also use my paper towel to dab at it, but again, I really don't wanna do that. I love the way it looks. when it's all dry. Um, you can tell, sometimes when I watercolor paint, guys, I tape down my canvas. So I'm getting a little bit of bowing here. You can see my paper jumping around as I'm painting. Um, but I did not wanna have big, thick white edges from taping it. But since you're the artist, you guys can do what you want. And if you have family or friends or neighbors who have a birthday, this would be a beautiful gift to give to somebody. And you could make them a flower or shapes or a garden or a tree, and it's really beautiful. And you can customize it to their favorite colors, or you can share your favorite colors with them. It's just a really fun project and really relaxing because you don't have to stress out about what happens to your paint it's so beautiful when it blends together like this. This teal effect is so pretty with that purple coming through. And I'm gonna encourage a little bit of this blue because I really like that, almost like a rainy cloud. So one of the reasons the way you need to be careful with what colors you're blending is if you're not careful, you'll end up with kind of a muddy brown, which I'm really close to on this one. <laughs> Trying to be careful not to get too much water in there because I have so many colors coming together that we're in danger of getting kind of a gross petal there. So pretty, beautiful effects. Okay. I hope you guys are able to paint along with me. This is a really good one that we can do together. And we're getting close to done. Look how pretty it is already starting to dry. This is also another one where if you've got it wet enough, you could even drop some salt onto it. And you know from some of our previous salt projects that it would really make a nice effect here if you had some salt. 
Um, I wanna encourage you not to be worried about this bleeding here in your petals if you guys decide to do flowers because that's really a special kind of effect that you can really only get with watercolor. You can't get that with oils very easily. And that's really why I prefer watercolor because you can bring out something very beautiful and unexpected. You really didn't even plan for. Look at this, as soon as I move it, you have this little wave of blue that sneaks in. Beautiful. Um, if you're worried about keeping your colors separated a little bit better than I did, I like the chaos of the rainbow. But if you want them separated, you can paint a petal over here, then jump over here, then a petal over here, and then you won't get so much um, bleeding here. Um, I actually really like that effect. I think it makes them look very special. But if you are determined to have you know, very bright yellow and very bright green petals. You may not want to do it one after the other like I am. You may want to go back and forth between different sides and that would allow the edges to dry enough that they don't bleed into each other as much. There we go. This is our last one. And you can go back in if you see any white spots just kind of fill it in or you can leave them that's kind of a pretty watercolor effect when you have that and that's it look how beautiful that turned out just lovely you can see the different colors bleeding in it really does look like a flower and you could do graduated colors starting here with a light pink and going dark or starting dark and going light. You could do anything you like. I love the rainbow. I think it looks really special. Um, you could then add in some clouds and sun and sky. But this is our project for today and I hope you guys had a wonderful time and I'll see you in two weeks.